gentlemen, welcome to McCarthy Athletic Center. The 2014-2015 Gonzaga basketball season starts right now. An exhibition matchup between Gonzaga and Thompson Rivers Wolfpack. They're out of Canada. I'm Greg Heister, along with Dan Dickow and Richard Fox. Guys, here we go. Hey, fellas, another year. Let's get this going, huh? We'll get you tonight's starting lineups in just a moment. But it'll be number 14, Josh Wolfram, a forward, tipping it off for Thompson Rivers and Shemek Karnowski, number 24 for Gonzaga. And we've got a whistle already. Okay. Here's our tip, and we're underway. A lot of new faces for Gonzaga to tell you about. A lot of new faces, and yet they're ranked in the top 15 to start this year. It tells you right away how talented they might be. Here's Wilcher, one of the transfers on defense, shot off. And back comes GU, and there's Gary Bell. Now in his senior year, guys, it's amazing. Well, it seems like this backcourt, Kevin Pangos, Gary Bell Jr., have been here forever. Started about 95% of the games, but that is what's going to drive the, this engine for Gonzaga this year is that senior leadership and skill. And there's our first foul of this game on Victor Aguero of the Wolfpack. So new clock for Kevin Pangos. He, too, a senior. And there's the young man, a transfer from USC, and a lot on his shoulders this year. Here's Pangos from the corner. Richard, it's important for him to get off to a good start this year shooting. Yeah, it really is. And you look at talk to Kevin before the game. He says he's never felt better physically. Took three months off just to recover. He says it's re refreshing coming into a new year, feeling like he's 100%. You saw right there, great-looking shot. Yeah, and all kinds of white jerseys on that backboard and bell, coast to coast. Off the glass, left it short. Rebounded by Josh Wolfram. And Wolfram keeps it. And now we'll hand off to his guard, Reese Probilski. Well, what you expect to see from Thompson Rivers is a team that's fairly well versed in what they want to do offensively. This is their sixth game of the year. Brett Rasol, nice left hand finish. And we've got a 3 2 game. Here's Karnowski inside. Kicks it out. Nice catch by Pangos. And you've got to go quickly if you're Karnowski. You have to understand you're going to get double not only tonight, but throughout the year with the shooting GU has. Someone's going to have to come down and help because he's going to be in isolation so often. Bell inside and a chance for three. Well, I like what I see from Gary Bell Jr. early in this game. In transition early with the left, couldn't quite finish it, but that time attacking the basket. I think one of the things in the past, he hasn't felt as comfortable attacking the basket. Plus, he's been banged up over the last couple of years with injuries. And Richard, he was banged up this season. Had to get a knee healthy. Yeah, he took more time than Pangos did, about yeah. four and a half months, just to recover. And, I mean, there was some question whether or not he was going to be available to start the yeah, season. Yeah, absolutely. For talking to him over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, he feels like he's ready as well. Healthy, rested, and talking to the staff, you know, they've got so many new players that we'll get into, but so, yeah, that comfort blanket the staff has is knowing they've got two lead guards in Pangos and Bell with that much experience. They, they figure they're going to be okay early on in the year. Talon Milne from the baseline, 6-4 the score, and we've got a whistle. And this will be against Thompson Rivers. It's on number 15. That's Milne, his first, team's third. And here's Wilcher. A little zone look here from the Wolfpack. Off that inbounds. From the elbow, Wilcher's first shot is long. Well, Foxy hit it right on the head. They gave him a zone look out of the out of baseline out of bounds, but Gonzaga will be a tough team to zone because of their ability to shoot the ball one, one through four. And that step back is long by Wolfram. Back comes GU. Here's Byron Wesley on the move, and he's earned the trip to the free throw line. Dan Wesley, transfer from USC, and able to play right away. What makes this guy 
what he was a year ago in the Pac-12, which was really, really good. Well, you see what he did at USC. He led them in points and rebounds as a wing. Averaged 18 points, a little over six rebounds. That's one thing Gonzaga has struggled at in the past is finding production at the three position. They shouldn't have that problem this year. And here's our starting lineups brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Pangos, Bell, Wesley, Karnowski, and Kyle Wilcher. A couple of uh, transfers along with two seniors in Karnowski uh, for Mark Few in the starting lineup. And he'll be the first to tell you it means nothing. He starts the game. <laughs> it reminds me of that every year. So it's nice to start with three guards that all have over 90 games experience in their college career. A very mature group out there on the floor for GU. And this is a nice starting lineup if you're going to go this way throughout the year. This group's going to be comfortable wherever GU goes and plays. This group's not going to be intimidated. Aguero fights his way in the middle and hits it over Pangos. That was a sharp-looking shot. Well, that was a nice little shot, but it looked like Karnowski actually blocked it and redirected it into the bucket. Here's Wesley. Just beyond the free-throw line. That rims out. And now we've got a whistle inside. And this is going to be on Thompson River. And that'll be their fourth team foul. Fifth team foul. Well, Kyle Wiltshire doing something that he's got to do a good job consistently this year, and that's going to the glass. If there's one thing about him is the fact that he's more of a skill guy rather than a banger. Gonzaga's going to need him to rebound a lot this year. That foul was called on Josh Wolfram. Here's Wesley driving, hanging, missed, and rebounded by Rousseau. And transition offense now. And that's something that the coaching staff for Gonzaga won't be happy for. Well, they got beat down the court. Opt the opt optimistic offense from the Wolfpack. You've got to get back to Karnowski. You've got to communicate with one another. This is why this game's important for GU. You get out of the practice environment. This is where you can work out some of those kinks. Go back and look at it on tape. Right there, just poor transition defense for the Bulldogs. And Wiltshire unable to handle that pass from Bell. So a turnover tied at eight. There's a hard screen set. Ball into the corner. Shot away is short. And Karnowski with a one-handed rebound. Wiltshire posting up. Jump hook. Wesley! Offensive putback. Well, I like the look from Wiltshire initially, though. Held his ground, was able to create some space for himself and still get up a good shot despite some contact. That's something he couldn't do when he got to GU. You know, so much has been said about one of the reasons Wiltshire came here was to have a Kelly Olenek type red shirt year, and it'll be interesting to see once you get into games if he's going to have that same impact. Bang goes to Karnowski, and Shemek will go to the free throw line. 15-10 to play first half. We've got a two-point game. Free throws to come for Gonzaga when we come back. There's Wilcher, and there's Wesley, the two transfers. Keys to the game, guys. Well, I think for Gonzaga, they've got to the, stick to the syllabus, and what I mean by that is there's a path and a plan for every season. They must take it step by step and not get ahead of themselves. And you've got a lot of guys to integrate, seven new newcomers. It's important tonight, the only time they'll be under the bright lights before things get going for real, that those guys get to play together and get adjusted to being a Bulldog. Guys, you guys both played on really good teams here at Gonzaga. How long does it take for chemistry to build? Well, they've already, they're, they've already been working on it. This, and they've done some things that they haven't done in years past, trying to get the guys together out off of campus, spend some quality time together. But, you know, you've got, when you've got great leadership, not only with your staff, but with guys like Bell, Pangos, guys who understand what it takes to be on championship winning teams i'm not really that concerned about this team coming together and meshing i'm not either and i think it's a lot of it's because of so many of the guys stick around take summer school and then the new rules that went into effect a couple years ago is you could practice up to 40 days before your first game you can get 30 practices in kyle dren guinness number three on the floor now for gonzaga there's a turnover against thompson rivers so wesley out dren guinness in this, and so is DeMontis Sabonis, our first look at him. And guys, Sabonis, really talented young guy. Dran Guinness is an indication of what Mark Few is going to have to deal with this year. Well, you got two starters at your three spot in Dran, Dran Guinness and Wesley. And both those guys played a high level. And with Sabonis, 
This is a kid that played in the second best league in the world last yeah. year for a great team. And Sabonis has one of those great motors, but my point was Kyle Dranginis, this is a guy that is expected to have an impact in this program. Is he going to be able to, and we're talking about Coach Few, will he be able to find enough playing time for all these bodies? Well, I think so. Obviously, there you see Domus Sabonis late on the rotation picking up the foul, but I think this Gonzaga team and Coach Few has a luxury that they haven't had in the past at the three position. Byron Wesley has played starters minutes for three years at USC, had success, but he's a different player than Kyle Dranginis. I think Kyle is, like Richard Fox likes to allude to him, is a multi-talented utility knife, can do a lot of different things. I think both of them are going to have a big impact throughout the year. And, I, and for that reason, I like, I like bringing Kyle off the bench because you can slide him into either th all three wing positions. At times last year, they played him at the four. So whatever it is you need that night, you know you have a guy off the bench that can help you in that area. With Wesley, he's such a balanced player with so much experience. It's nice to bring him in the games right off the bat. But both guys are wonderful assets for you on the ball club. And guys, Gary Bell already three points, four rebounds, and an assist. Make it two assists now as Sabonis gets his first bucket. But what you saw in his first bucket as a Gonzaga Bulldog is something that is very hard to do as a young player. Seal early seal up high when you get that pass keep it high quick finish he's gonna have a heck of a freshman year he's gonna have a heck of a career here well he's got some great genes our venus the bonus his father hall of famer so i think he knows how to play and i think he learned from one of the best and wilcher now guys 0 for 4 to start the game yeah but i don't mind the fact he's 0 for 4 hey he hasn't played in 18 months He's not going to be a you know, superstar the first time he gets back on a basketball court. What I like is the way he's trying to score. When he was at Kentucky, everything was on the three-point line or pick and pops. He's going to do a lot of that for the Bulldogs. But what I like is he's trying to take advantage of some matchups around the basket. That's what you want to see after 18 months off as his game changed. And we've seen that. Foul called there on Kyle Drent. Guinness, his first, team second. A couple of substitutions now coming in for Gonzaga. One of the new players, Josh Perkins, a freshman from Denver, Colorado. And Angel Nunez coming in as well. And so, guys, Perkins came here with a lot of attention. What do, you th what do we think of this Well, guy? I really like Josh Perkins' game. I think he has a chance to be a very good point guard. He's got a lot to learn still, but he's got some physical tools that a lot of point guards that have come through this program haven't had. And the nice thing about Josh Perkins is he's the best player from Regis High School oh, come out of on. Denver, Colorado. Seriously. The second best player ever is seated to my uh. right, Richard Fox. <laughs> the, uh, second leave that alone. the second uh, best player. Please. Is your number retired down there, Richard? Uh, yeah, I, think, I don't know. It, it, yeah, they, I think they, I don't they, know. No, they did something, but I wasn't there. Was, I was oh, playing in college. I don't I know. You're too busy. Uh, I think they have a, a headstone or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> Pangos. Oh, it's a bonus left hand good. How about that little step by Pangos? Well, you see, talking to Kevin, he, he, he said his ankle and his toe wasn't just on the shooting where he really felt it, not having great balances. When he would try to attack the rim, he couldn't plant, couldn't cut the way he wanted to, really limited not only his sh shot making ability, but trying to create angles to drop the ball off to his bigs. You saw right there a wonderful feed to Sabonis. That ball looked like it was kicked by Pangos. Nose wh whistle. Here's Perkins. Left it for Nunez. And Angel will shoot two free throws. Well, we talked about Josh Perkins has some physical tools that some point guards haven't had. But one of the things that he does have is a great vision, a great court awareness, the willingness and the ability to pass the ball right there. That was a great pass and transition to Angel Nunez. Well, I, I, what, what's tough for Josh right now is they're asking him to learn two positions because coming off the bench, he's either going to come in for Kevin or come in for Gary. So he's got to know a couple different spots. It's a lot to take in as a freshman, but he's learning curve. He's picking things up quickly, and, and this is what he has. This is his gift. He's, he's able to create shots for other people. It makes everybody around him better. The more he matures, the more you're going to see that. And not only that, but he could score. As a junior in high school, he scored 25 a game. So he's got really the whole package offensively. And, guys, we have not seen Silas Melson, another freshman guard, who will not play in this game tonight. But how does he figure into this with Perkins as well? Well, I think Silas is a is more of a two-guard, but he's got some point guard skills to him. He's got a very good athletic ability, very long, very attacking type of player. 
Obviously, he's not playing tonight with concussion, but I think he's got a phenomenal future as well here at Gonzaga. What I like about Silas is he's got a little edge to him. He's very confident. If you asked him, he'd tell you he thinks he should be playing a ton. He's got a nice swagger about his game, and that's something you don't see a lot with freshmen. Most freshmen are tentative, trying to get their bearings. He's very, very confident in the right way. He's a very talented kid, a kid who, had he not committed as early as he did to GU, probably would have been a much higher level recruit. A yeah. very talented kid. Absolutely. He was young coming out of high school, and kind of what, what, what was said amongst recruiting circles was had he not committed early, he would have had teams like Kansas, Kentucky, those type schools after him. Brent Guinness took a step before the dribble there, turnover against Gonzaga. 11.47 to play, first half. Gonzaga with a four-point lead on Thompson Rivers. More when we come back. Gonzaga Hoops is brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Show your bulldog pride with your GoZags debit card only at Numerica. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Against Thompson River. There's a uh, Pangos and Bell. Guys, it's nice to have a couple of seniors at guard position in the Richard. Oh, it really is. Especially when you've got so many moving parts right now. Seven new players, four of them freshmen, three transfers. Even though Kyle's been here for over a year, you know, there's a big difference. And Dan, you and I can both speak to it. There's one thing to retro, one thing to out, be part of the group, trying to prepare for games, getting thrown into the fire. Having those two senior guards and having a guy like Grant Guinness off your bench is a nice plus for the staff. That ball out of bounds off of Thompson Rivers. Well, right there, you see defensively, one of the things I think Gonzaga has a chance to do more this year as compared to years past is pressure defense three-quarter court, especially with Angel Nunez at the top with his length and athleticism. Thompson River was doing a great job with the ball, but now three consecutive turnovers on possessions. Four for the game. Brent Guinness into the paint, to the rim, off the glass. He'll shoot an extra one. Foul called there on number 13. That's Gerard Gore, Dan. And there's just a really good job of Kyle Drang Guinness coming off the pick and roll with patience. Little hesitation dribble to see what happens with the secondary defense. Gets into the teeth, creates contact, goes through, finishes it, has a chance for the N1. Well, people forget last year he was top three in rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks for the Bulldogs. I mean, that's impressive for a 6'5 wing to do that many things well. Just a wonderful guy to bring off your bench. And in my opinion, he's good enough to be a starter. He's sneaky big, too. He seems bigger than 6'5 when you stand next to him. Yeah, I know maybe not you, Richard, because no, you're like eight feet tall. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little taller, but he, he's filled out. He is. And, 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 you know, there's something about, you know, the, the longer you're in the program, the older you get, everything slows down a bit. Everything gets a little bit easier. And I think he's at that tipping point now where he's no longer a new guy. He's a veteran, and, he's play, and he plays like it. There's a big shot by Brett Rasolt. And that keeps the Wolf back to within three. Here's a bonus down low, left hand short. Nunez with the offensive rebound off the glass. Five point lead. Just a great offensive possession. Perkins probing in transition, getting it to the block early with Sabonis. And then Nunez not settling for just watching it, going ahead and following it with the tip. But you see there when Sabonis gets the ball, he's got one thing in mind. So, yeah, and he's got a little bull in the China shop right now to his game. But you have to understand, he played at such a high level last year as we get the jump ball here. A nice help side from Pangos on the ball handler. But he's, this, his adjustment's not going to be talent. As you see the highlight here, Nunez, this is what they want him to do is be a live body around that basket. For Sabonis, the adjustment's not going to be talent level or, or his skill level. It's going to be adjusting to the game in the U.S. We saw Karnowski had the same adjustment as a freshman. We'll see the same process for Sabonis. So I, I anticipate initially to start the year, you're going to see some foul trouble and, and, and some hiccups. But once he figures it out, he's going to be a big, big piece of what they're doing. Is it easier for a European player who has a physical mentality versus someone who's just got a skilled mentality coming to play this game? You know, it's just a, it's almost a completely different game over there. Dan, you, you played over there for a bit as well. It, it, it's more physical over there. He's going to get called for fouls. He's not. He's going to be looking around, thinking to himself, me. It just takes a while to figure out. The pace of the game is a little different, uh, but I think he's going to adjust pretty quick. Well, Richard touched on it earlier. The fact that he played for Malaga in the ACB in Spain, and what people need to understand and realize as we go back and take a quick look. 
Wiltshire over the top to Wesley with the nice finish, but Sabonis has been playing against grown men, professionals over there in Spain. So when he comes over here and he's practicing against Kyle Wiltshire, McDonald's All-American who was at Kentucky, yeah. and a Karnowski, that's nothing no to him deal. in all honesty. Yeah, no big he's deal. been playing against bigger and better guys for the last few years. And that's why maybe the transition won't be as big for him. Wesley now with six points for Gonzaga. I think anytime you can get a physical player on the court, it's a good thing. And Gary Bell well, he looks off good. to a tremendous start tonight for GU. He looks good. He looks decisive. And this year, he, he's such a good shooter. We all know that. Shoots about 43% for his career. But what's always been a, a bit of an issue is they've had to try to coax shots out of Gary. It's his senior year. You're open. You need to shoot it. And right, I mean, right there, no hesitation. I think last year sometimes he'd pump fake, try to take a dribble or two, or move the ball along. He's too valuable for them when he shoots the ball. He needs to take those shots. GU's better for it. Gonzaga on a 12-3 run. Bell now with six points. There's a little runner. Wilcher another rebound for GU. And Perkins with it. Skip pass. Bell again wide open from the corner. That one's off the front of the rim. Rebounded, and Sabonis picks up his second personal foul. Well, even though Gary missed the shot, I love the fact that he's hunting open spaces. Two things opened up that opportunity for Gary to take the shot. One, Sabonis ran the floor, created the defense to be focused and worried on him. But again, Josh Perkins, that is a phenomenal find as a freshman to be able to see that cross-court transition. That is a heck of a play. And Gonzaga's made six of their last nine shots from the floor. And now some defense there, but a foul called on Perkins. A little reach around and deflection. And Perkins picks up the personal foul. That's number six against GU. And that's his second. Well, he did foul there. But one thing that I like that he's done early in this game is he's willing to get up and climb up into you as soon as you get the ball. He's put pressure on the ball 40 feet away from the basket. You just got to be smart not to pick up little fouls like that. Well, we haven't talked about it in depth, but there's no reason this can't be the best defensive team GU's ever had with that length. The athleticism they now have on that perimeter and the depth of it. They've had one or two guys in the past, but they've got four or five guys who are high-level athletes. This needs to be the best perimeter defensive team they've had in a long time. And I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but if that's the case, well, here we if go. this turns out to be the best defensive team that he's ever had, especially on the perimeter. You know they're going to score points, Richard. Well, they and were Dan. great defensively Bingo! last year. Bingo! Bell, another one! <laughs> they were great defensively last year. They forced their opponents under 40% field goal shooting, which is something that yeah. typically Gonzaga hasn't done. So, you know, if they're, they don't ever have to worry about scoring in this program. But defensively, if they can have a great year, they've got a chance to be very good. Here's Wesley. Tarnowski going to work. Left hand. 15-point <laughs> lead, Gonzaga. And GU on a 12-0 run. I'm just saying, that they're really good defensively. And they're really good offensively. It's a really good team. Are you saying that's kind of a formula? I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. If you're really you good, guys if you're, if you're really you want to fight thing. me before the game, i the potential of this thing. If they're truly this good in both facets of that, then there's Wilter. And that was a deep three. And that's what he can do better than probably any big man that's come through this program quite some time is knock down shots they from might, the three-point line, stretch the he field. He might be the best four in the country doing that. I mean, that's, that's his bread and butter. Spotting up, shooting threes, dribble handoffs, pick and rolls. And there's a foul called on number 14, Josh Wolf from, for being over the back. That's his two second and number nine now against Thompson Rivers. Well, the deep three from Gary Bell off another great feed. To you, running away from Thompson Rivers. We'll be right back, folks. Gonzaga with a 32-16 lead right now against Thompson Rivers. Gary Bell, 9.4 rebounds and two assists. Eight Zags have scored to this point. Greg Heister, Dan Dickow, and Richard Fox. And guys, 
Gonzaga's looking pretty good to start this game, aren't they? Well, I think they started off maybe a little sloppy, but I think Thompson Rivers started off making some shots, surprising people, keeping it close. But, you know, I think the last five, six minutes or so, you've started to see the ability of Gonzaga to score buckets in a number of different ways. Byron Wesley getting to the basket, Gary Bell Jr. finding open spots on the perimeter, and then Kyle Wilcher on that last possession knocking down a trail three. And now Wilcher at the free throw line. With 7.02 to play first half. Gonzaga's got some really big non-conference games this year on the schedule, guys. And with Wilcher's experience already where he's played and where he's been in the SEC, those games are not going to bother him at all. No, not at all. You know, the, the, the two games that people, I think, are really looking forward to is the rematch with Arizona from last year's NCAA tournament, and then the game at UCLA and Poly Pavilion. Everybody's going to remember two big games in Gonzaga history, losing to UCLA in the NCAA tournament in Oakland with Adam Morrison's junior year, but also Gonzaga going down and just throttling them in Poly. Some nice interior defense there by Wiltshire. Wesley up court to Gary Bell. Perkins to Wiltshire. Spins left hand, rolls off the rim. Ball loose, picked up by Wesley. Good. Gonzaga leads it by 20. And 16 points now from the transfers, guys. Immediate impact, particularly with, you know, with Wesley and Wiltshire, you're, you're getting two transfers as Shema gets the block that you know, started at times in their careers. So these guys are not, you know, their, their adjustment's going to be quick on the floor. Gary Bell earning a trip to the free throw line. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest now joining us, Mike Roth, the athletic director here at Gonzaga. And Mike, well, these seasons are coming fast, aren't they? Here we are again. They come fast for me now, that's for sure. Uh, so, the expectations are high, obviously. Ranked number 13 in the country to start. Absolutely. You're the athletic director. You live this pressure that kind of lives around this program these days. Where are you at with this? Well, we would we would love this pressure. It's it's what we've made. It's what we want. Uh, you know, we want to have a program that, that allows us to do what we're doing uh, like this, to be the 13th team, you know, ranked team in the country at the start of the season and uh, with great expectations. That's what we want every year. You've been around this thing for a long time. On paper, how good is this team? I think we're really good. I, I think just not on paper. We're really deep. We're really talented with a bunch of great young men. Uh, these guys are really special as people, not just as basketball players, and we're really pleased with that. So I think that puts Mike Roth and Heister on one side of the aisle <laughs> and Dick Owen Fox on the other side. I think that's what that does. <laughs> well, I, I like all of our teams, you know. Yes. You know, I remember back when these two guys were playing, and uh, I really like that team too. Long I like them all. Long time ago, Mike. Long. That was a long time. So it tells me if you asked him the question that day, maybe not as much as he does now, right? But I, I had less gray hair then. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so did they. So did they. I had a lot more hair. Yeah. They, yeah. Richard and I had that uh, had that discussion here before the game a little bit about uh, the whole hair thing. So. I walked away kind of depressed talking about how my hair used to look. Yeah, was... But at his height, you know, no, nobody can notice. You know, you know? That's true. <laughs> that's true. Uh, the transfers, I mean, a lot's going to be expected out of that. And, and not that transfers haven't made an impact uh, in this program before. We're sitting next to a couple of them that, that had, got two of them yeah, right had here. an impact. But it seems well, like this year, I mean, there's two transfers in the starting five. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, you know, they they both played, as Dan, I said, I think said earlier, that, you know, they both played in a lot of big-time situations. I mean, Kyle played in the national championship game. And uh, so, you know, they, they've been here before. They, they just haven't played with this uniform on yet. And now we're going to get to see what that looks like. Mike, do you like the new transfer rule where if you graduate early and you have a year of eligibility like Byron Wesley, you're able to go to a different school and finish your eligibility out? Yeah, I, I mean, at first I don't think I really liked it that much. But let's, let's face it, it, it's been in play for a while. I think it's helped some kids. It, it's made a difference for some kids had the opportunity. It, you know, as an institution, you never like to see somebody leave your place after being there for three years or, or possibly even four if they redshirted and then move on to play their last year someplace else. You wouldn't want to see that, really. But at the same time, why is that? And if you've done your job at your institution, the guys aren't going to leave. I mean, you know, last year we had two, you know, fifth-year seniors that uh, could have left. Both had graduated, David and Sam. They could have left, but 
they stayed because this is a place to be. And, and I think that's what Kyle and, and, and Byron and Eric, for that matter, are seeing. Is this is an opportunity to come and, and play on a national big-time stage. Talking about Eric McClellan, who's not eligible to play until uh, early January, transfer from Vandy. Uh, give us a state of the affairs here at Gonzaga. Well, this is Things a really, are rolling still, aren't they? They are rolling, and we're really happy with you know what's going on. Yet, it's a really interesting time at the NCA with with all the changes going on and the potential changes coming down the road with the Big Five and all that. Uh, we're doing everything in our uh, in our place to make sure we're ready for those changes so that we can continue to compete at this national level and and continue to deliver to you know our constituents, our students behind us, our faculty, our staff our benefactors this type of program year in and year out because one would think that it would get easier for Gonzaga as the years go on to stay competitive but with this landscape that you're now looking at in college athletics it seems like it's getting more and more difficult but yet here's another team that's reloaded absolutely it's going to continue to get more and more difficult but again we have the right people in place they're sitting across from us over there all wearing khakis and blue shirts and uh, <laughs> they are they are ready to go to uh, continue this success and administratively we're behind them supporting that and continuing you know as these guys heard me say for years when they played for us we're going to never be satisfied with what we're doing we're always going to find ways to get better. We're always going to be doing that, and uh, that's what we're trying to do today. Here's Wilcher at transition three. He can shoot the three, can He's he? He's not going to miss many of those this year, guys. <laughs> He's been struggling getting it to drop from inside, but those threes are going down. I don't think they were concerned I, I about I kind of remember 21 ball. doing that once in a while. Yeah, my whole philosophy was what is three's worth more than two, right? So yeah. why don't you shoot more of those? But <laughs> yeah, Dan didn't miss many inside because I don't think Dan <laughs> shot very many inside. <laughs> he didn't pass it much either, Mike, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's thanks, why he had, he had Blake. He had Blake to pass it to him. Mike, thanks for your time. You bet. Thank you it's guys. Great to see again, you. It's great to have you guys back. Yeah. Great, you know, great to have you guys over here. So, all right. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. 3.55 to play in the first half. Gonzaga with a 19-point lead against Thompson River. We continue when we come back. Gonzaga Hoops is brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Zags fans, Northern Quest Rise and Shine package includes one night stay and $20 towards breakfast at Maslow's, Spokane's only AAA Four Diamond restaurant, starting at $129. Visit northernquest.com. Restrictions apply. And welcome back courtside. Gonzaga with a 19-point lead at 39-20. Greg Heister, Dan Dicko and Richard Fox. And gentlemen, you both had a chance to play for Mark Few. What makes him good? Well, I think he does a great job of, of getting guys to play in an aggressive mindset. And, and you see it tonight with Gary Bell. He's coming off of injuries, and I'm sure he knows and understands this is his last real shot. And tonight he's came out and played as aggressive as I've ever seen Gary Bell play. And I think Coach Few really instills a mindset in of his guys that, you know what, just go out there and play hard and let it all fly. Bell, nine points, four rebounds, two assists. And Richard, Mark Few loves to score points, and he loves to push the ball up and down the court, but he's never lost sight of the importance of a back-to-the-basket player at that five position, has he? No, GU, rightfully so, is, I think, considered a, a university or a program that's produced some really high-level guards, but you look at the history of the program, they've had some tremendous interior players as well. And his team's always, he always wants to have that balance, and he... Uh, more often than not, it ends up playing inside and out. He tries yeah. to set up that perimeter by trying to have a guy or two who could scroll with their back to the basket, and they've obviously got that this year. But I also like about Mark is he really delegates and provides a lot of authority, or rather gives a lot of authority to his assistants. Donnie Daniels, Brian Michelson, Tommy Lloyd. When you go to practice, it's obviously Mark's practice, but he lets those guys coach. He lets those guys have an input, and I think that only adds value to your program. Trent Guinness poked it away. 15 on the shot clock. Driving and hanging and off the glass. Josh Wolfram. But the offensive foul is called. Well, but what you see there is what Richards alluded to, the fact that Kyle Dranginis can do a number of different things and really understands the game. That time, he gets over from a help side defense, gets there in time, and is willing to get his chest in front and take the charge. They counted the bucket here. So it makes it a 15-point game. 
So my understanding on this is that if they're counting the bucket and calling a charge, he lets it go. He yeah, runs into Kyle. Right. They're, they're, they're saying that it's like a continuation type of foul. Yeah. And so it's a shooting foul as a result. Yes. Duran Guinness. And Angel Nunez checking in. And Wilcher checks out. Duran Guinness now with a couple of points. Three points. That's a big team, gentlemen. They have some size, and I really like Nunez and what he can do. He's probably their best athlete, and he can play multiple spots for you. In league, you can put him at the five for short stretches. He's really more of a, a three, four, but he can guard everybody on the perimeter. He's really very, very versatile defensively, and he's starting to buy into, they've kept his role simple. Hassle people defensively, offensively, set good screens, roll hard to the basket, crash the offensive glass every time a shot goes up. And if you're open from three and your feet are set, that's a good shot for us. I think he's starting to figure out what they want from him. He's going to be a nice piece for them well, off I think the it was. I think it was difficult for him last year because when you come in midseason and the team already ha kind of has a chemistry, kind of has a role, you, it's hard to adjust and get in, figure out what your role is within the framework of the team there. You know, going back to that play right there that Wesley's just showing you another example of, of what he can do that time posting him up he gets a little flash of the block scores over the top that's another luxury that this program hasn't had at the three and I don't know when well, he's a he's a straight scorer fellas I mean took 11 shots a game over the course of his career at USC gets to the line uh, it's really an interesting dynamic for GU usually you bring one impact transfer. They've got two, and McClellan off the bench is not going to be eligible until after first semester. All three of those guys were the guy or an important piece to teams that they're coming from. And so you, you, you're not only bringing role guys, you're bringing guys who know how to score. It's an interesting uh, situation for GU. They can put five scorers out there on the floor on a consistent basis. And there have been some good post-up guards in this program's history. I mean, you look at Blake used to be able to do that. Bolden Matt do Bolden, it. Pargo could post yeah. up. But sometimes guards think they post to score, and that's not necessarily always the case. A lot of the times, as a guard, if you post, it's to create a double team. So now you can swing, swing, get the ball on the second side, and get an open look on the on the weak side. They're right there. You see just a silly turnover. And while they've practiced that countless times, you're playing against a new opponent, a different environment. Those are the reasons you play these exhibitions to get these kicks out. And it's, it's going to take a while for Wesley to adjust. I mean, I think his game's already adjusted. He, is, he knows who he is. He's a great player. But he's got to learn how to play with Kevin and Gary Grant Guinness in a live environment. That's going to take a bit of time. We well, talked to the coaching staff, and they've said he's done a great job of fitting in. A guy like that who's, who's been a big part of a team at the Pac-12 level for three straight years, led them in scoring last year, 18 at points per game at that level. He could have easily stayed at that program, but he wanted to go to a place where he had a chance to win and in particular play in the NCAA tournament. That's why he's here. <laughs> Look at Sabotis. Stay with it. Got his own rebound and then the finish. He's a big boy, too. Oh, he's going to be he's a gonna, monster. Yeah, he's easy to put 30 pounds on that frame. And now he'll, he'll defend. There's a shot for three. That's long. Guys, Kevin Pangos hit his first shot and has not taken a shot since then. Grant Guinness, that's an offensive foul. But is that something Gonzaga well, has got to be kind of sensitive no. to, losing him in the mix? I, I, I don't think so. He's their guy. This is his team. Uh, he knows it. The staff knows it. Everybody else out there on the floor knows it. What's nice is they, they don't need him to force shots. They, they don't need him to constantly look to create offense for himself. And he's a good enough player. His IQ is off the charts, and he's unselfish enough. Well, he's going to let the game come to him for, for portions of, the, uh, of games and maybe even portions of the season. But at the end of the day, they need a shot. I think he's the guy who takes the shot. I don't know what you but think, Dan. Let me throw this at you, though. This is his last chance to prove to the world that he can play at the next level. 
And I know he's as, as unselfish as a player has ever been in this program. But, Dan, he's going to want to score his points, right, to prove to the world that he can play. Yeah, every player's goal and dream is to play in the NBA. And, and I think if Kevin just sticks to the script, and by what, by what I mean by that is just does his role, I think he's going to get a very long look at the next level. And it's because the way the game in the NBA has transferred over the last few years is the fact that they value shooters, they value guys that understand the game, space the floor, and, and are willing playmakers for others. And those characteristics right there fit Kevin very well. Here's the upcoming schedule for Gonzaga. Kevin Pango's been, throughout his career, one of the great players. And guys, how difficult is this? SMU's no joke. Larry Brown's bringing a really good yeah, team in here. Good. It doesn't get easy. You, rather, you don't have an easy stretch. St. Joe's is always difficult, and they've given GU fits both on the East Coast, and we, they beat GU in 03 uh, at the old kennel. So uh, this is a great, great uh, schedule. I mean, I believe 14 teams on the schedule will either play in the NCAA tournament or play the NIT last year. So this is as good a schedule as GU's had in a number of years. At Arizona, at UCLA, there's a nice finish. Under a minute to play first half. Not only that, but I think the WCC is very improved. I mean, BYU lost Eric Mika to a, a Mormon mission, but St. Mary's has a chance to be good. They've got a transfer to San Francisco continues to improve. It, it's a tough league. There's Newton. You've been talking with head coach Mark Few too much. I'm just saying. Pepperdine has been much improved over the playing, last few years. Coach Billy Greer down at USD, he's got a great backcourt. Yeah, like, it's like, always tough like in the West team. Coast Conference. But I, I think with the West Coast Conference, you're never going to say you here's four teams that are making the NCAA tournament. But what I think you can see now is consistently two teams are going to make the tournament. A third is going to have a legitimate shot in particular if they win the conference tournament and GU doesn't happen to win it. But I think that four, five, six level team is now very good. Richard nodded his head in acknowledgement. Agreeing? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think the league's deeper as far as there's more quality teams. I don't think there's another team this year that's at GU's level. I think in years past, you've seen St. Mary's, and you look at them, you say, yeah, they might be better, or they're, they're just as good. BYU, same thing. I think if, if all the teams in the league, BYU probably has uh, the best chance to really give GU problems over the course of a conference schedule. Uh, but I, I need to see a little more from the league to see what kind of depth they have. Well, I never said they were, anybody was going <laughs> to knock off Gonzaga. I just oh. said the league was good. Dunia <laughs> scoring a bucket for the other team there. <laughs> oh, at the buzzer, it rolls off the rim. Connor Griffin unable to get it going. Okay, I'm just going to leave that last point alone. All right, guys, you've seen him now for 20 minutes. What do we see? A lot of kicks to get out, but the reality is this team's got a lot of depth, a lot of size, great talent on the perimeter. They're going to be just fine. It's been 20 minutes. We're at halftime at the McCarthy Athletic Center. Gonzaga with a 46-28 lead. Halftime straight ahead. The Gonzaga Halftime Report brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino. Join us for a mouth-watering steak dinner, a pampering spa treatment, or for one of our massive jackpots. Win big and rediscover the Coeur d'Alene Casino Resort. And welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. We are at halftime in Gonzaga with a 46-28 lead over Thompson Rivers. Greg Heister, Dan Dickow, and Richard Fox. And guys, uh, we saw a lot of the strength that we're going to see this year. What did you see that's a weakness? I like, to, I like those two transfers. <laughs> yeah, they played well early on. 19 yeah. points, 9 rebounds. Wesley was really effective after missing a few shots early. 4 of 6 from the field. Got to the line three times. You know, Wiltshire struggled with his shot, but what I liked is the way he was looking to score. He made two threes. Those came within the context of the offense, but really trying to get position on the low block and make guys pay down in that area. We, this is something he could not do before he got here, at least not consistently. I like the fact he's trying to do that, also doing a nice job in the glass. Yeah, and I think for me, it's Gary Bell Jr. You know, there were so many question marks about his health coming in this year. I know he had a lot of issues with his knee over the summer and nine points, four rebounds, but hunting shots on the perimeter and attacking off the bounce and trying to get into the paint. He impressed me early in this half. Yeah. 
I mean, it, it, having the health of Gary Bell and Kevin Pangos is awfully helpful. And I think the fact that those guys were feeling that good coming into the year is another thing you look at and say, it's going to be a good team. Eight players scored for Gonzaga in that first half. They're up 46-28. We're at halftime, and it continues. Gonzaga leading Thompson Rivers 46-28, led by 11 points from Byron Wesley. Gary Bell chipped in with nine, and Mr. Kyle Wilcher with eight. Halftime continues from the Mac when we come back. 46-28, we're at halftime. Greg Heister, Dan Dickow, Richard Fox. Guys, the coaching staff in there right now with the team. Happy, unhappy, a little bit of both. What do they want to see different here in the second half? Well, I think I, w I, w I want them to see that they've been sharing the basketball. They haven't shot a great percentage, although if you look down, they're 53%. shooting 53%, but it, it doesn't seem like they've been as efficient as maybe we all thought they might. I think where the difference has come tonight is they're 5 for 7 from the uh, three-point line. They are struggling, which is... <laughs> Is, is somewhat typical, especially considering last the couple of years with Karnowski struggling from the line. They're only 9 for 19 from the free throw line. He's 0-4. Nunez 1-4. of 4. I mean, those are two of your bigs. You, those guys need to make those shots consistently. We can talk about that in the second half. But you know, I think it's just more about competing. I mean, this game's over. You want to see everybody <laughs> you put out there compete. I think you'll see a lot more Perkins and Sabonis get those guys as acclimated as possible because they're big pieces of what you're going to try to do this year. Uh, but really just competing, I think as a staff, it's what you always want to see. And these types of games are going to be difficult when they, the outcomes are determined to get that from your players. It is an exhibition game. Gonzaga, Thompson Rivers, second half. We're getting ready. Come on back. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. Greg Heister, Dan Dick, uh, Richard Fox. Going to take a look at the statistics now. We talked a little bit about them. Gonzaga shooting 53%, 16 of 30. But as Dan pointed out, it doesn't seem, watching that first half, they shot that percentage, but they ended up doing that. The Wolfpack, 41.7%. They were in most of that first half. Gonzaga really started to pull away. But Gonzaga controlling everything, Dan. The boards, but their free throws got to get better than that. Yeah, Thompson Rivers started off the first seven, eight minutes of the game extremely well. I think it was a two-point game after about six, seven minutes. Gonzaga started to turn up the defensive intensity, the pressure, got out in transition. That, in turn, also allowed them to kind of pick and choose their spots. Started knocking down some three-pointers. They're five for nine from there, but you are exactly right. Nine for 19 from the free throw line is not going to cut it, especially when they get into the meat of their offseason schedule with teams like SMU, Arizona, UCLA. But you got to consider, you got to figure with the quality of shooters that the team has, the free throw numbers are going to come. Yeah, that's true. And I, I think one thing that, you know, maybe those numbers are skewed at times because a guy like Shemek puts so much foul pressure on teams and he's going to have a chance to shoot a high number of free throws. Okay, so here we go. Wilcher and Sabonis, Bell and Wesley and Pangos on the floor for Gonzaga to start the second half. There's an open look at three. That's off Sabonis the rebound. Interesting look here to start the second half. That's Sabonis. a deep three in transition by Bell. You know, but I like that shot. That shows an aggressive nature to him that we haven't necessarily seen in particular last year, but you know, we see Sabonis starting the second half in place of Karnowski. My guess is that Shemek is just done for the night. Well, he's got three fouls. That could be part of it, but he, you're very, you may be right, Dan. Uh, you need to get Sabonis, Nunez, Wiltshire, a lot of run. You already know what you have in Karnowski. Exactly. Nice runner off the glass there by Reese Prybliski. It's a 16-point game. Wesley led Gonzaga in scoring that first half. Got it back to Wilcher, and he has it knocked away. It's out of bounds. Possession staying with GU. There's a deep three. Kevin Pangos. Wilcher over everyone for that rebound. Then he's stripped, and back come the Wolfpack. And they shoot the transition three. And Wesley the rebound, outlet Pangos. Kevin middle of the floor. Sabonis 
And the left hand is slammed. Just a great push and transition, probing of the defense by Pangos. Great find. Yeah, across the court, over there at the three-point line. Open up that angle to Sabonis. It's the second time we've seen him do that. And Wesley with another rebound. He's got seven for the game. Goes with 11 points. There's the turnover. <laughs> what a reverse there by Pribliski. Great use of the rim to shield it from the defender. I don't think there was anybody in here that thought he was had a shot at finishing that. It was he and Wesley. No shot here. Foul called before the shot. Nice little drop off. And you like to see your freshman go up with the intent to dunk it. Nice finish from Sabonis. And he's got a little more lift than you think. He's going to be a nice player for, for, for Coach View and this team. It's going to be interesting to see his role grow throughout the year. It's going to be better than nice, Richard. It's going to be fantastic to see his role grow throughout the year. <laughs> There's a deep three. Nothing but net there by Brett Rassol. You know what, though? I like this Thompson Rivers ball club. They're very well coached. Scott Clark has been involved with the Canadian national team for a number of years. Uh, they've got some good pieces. I think you, you see that this, we said earlier in the program, it's their sixth game of the year. They're three and two. Coach said it's been up and down up till this point. They've played fairly well, and he feels that they should have won four of those five games. But, you know, this is a great experience for those kids. Typically in, in Canada, your university games, you know, you're not going to be playing in front of more than five, 600 people. So this is a great atmosphere for those kids. And there's a foul called inside against Thompson Rivers. That's called on number 15. And this is what's hard. Taylor Milne, that's his fourth. This is what's hard in these types of games. You know, Wolfram's out, Milne's out with foul trouble, and all of a sudden you get really small if you're the Wolf Pack. And you gotta identify this though if you're the Bulldogs. Bell from the corner. That one's long. Guys, if you're the head coach, do you want to be tested in these games? Do you want to just to come out here and be able to roll? I, I think it's just you're more focused with, 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 with yourself. You want to get your guys in a live environment at home. You want to see them compete. You're a lot less worried about the level of competition. There's a reason they're playing Texas in a closed-door scrimmage next week. It's going to be you know, playing one of your peers, really testing yourself physically. I think this is a lot more about getting some kinks out, uh, putting some of these guys under lights for the first time uh, with a GU uniform on. And so far, so good. Look, they haven't looked great. But you're start, you, you kind of get a sense of how they're going to play and the balance that they're going to have and how much depth they actually have. I mean, there's three or four guys on the floor, or rather on the bench right now, that uh, could easily be out here starting every game. Dan Gonzaga started on a 24-5 run. And Thompson Rivers outscored him 19-14 cents. Well, I think what you're seeing from Thompson Rivers is Kyle Wilcher runs the floor to a nice finish. But, you know, these kids haven't backed down. Uh, and the, the thing that they have going from that for them is this is their sixth game. So they're becoming much more comfortable in their skin and who they are as a team as compared to Gonzaga. This is being their first time under the lights. Here's Wesley. Missed it. Sabonis kept it alive. Fighting for position as it knocked away. And now he's fouled inside. Foul called here on number 13, Gerard Gore. 15.41 to play. Exhibition action for Gonzaga. Kyle Wilcher, the lay in. 52 35 our score. Here's tonight's Arby's trivia question. How many consecutive NC2A tournament appearances have the Bulldogs made 
text your answer to 27297. We'll have that answer for you a little bit later in the show. 16, 18, 9, or 12. You know, Greg, you've mentioned a number of times how good is this team, and we just saw those two banners. Nobody knew how good that number one ranked team was going to be two years ago. But the reason they were so good was the chemistry. This team might have more talent like we've talked about, but so much is going to depend on how the chemistry builds throughout the course of the year. I absolutely agree, and that's why I say on paper. Oh, well, yeah, there's no doubt the depth. and the, the overall talent this team has is the best Mark Few's ever had. Top to bottom, they've had better players at certain positions, but just the quality of the entire team is, is, is phenomenal. But is, is Byron Wesley going to be okay playing 22 to 25 minutes a game rather than 34? Is Gary Bell going to be okay playing 28 minutes a game instead of 34, 33? You know, you go along the list. Is Josh Perkins going to be okay going from one of, you know, a top 10 point guard in the country to backing up a top 10 point guard in college for a year? Those are all the things that you have to work out as a ball club. And, and so far, it looks like guys are willing to be unselfish. But, but don't you... When you come to Gonzaga, don't you assume that's the, the scenario that you're going to be in? This has been about team basketball for a long time now, and has it been about an individual? No, I, I think you're aware that you, you, a big reason you come is the culture and, and what they've done in a long period of time, uh, the, the family atmosphere that the program has. There's no doubt that's part of it, but you want to play. I mean, don't, don't misunderstand it. You know, Josh Perkins, Silas Melson, Sabonis, these guys want to play minutes you, you, you want, you're a basketball player because you want to play the game but you have it's about helping them understand that it's about winning more than anything else and if this year your role is going to be something other than maybe what you'd like you have to embrace that and every team every you team have goes guys through this. that have has to give and take and you know that number one ranked team was a huge example of that great high low pass there from Shemek to Sabonis as he draws the foul, but that number one ranked team was an amazing example of understanding what was important for a team. Elias Harris, that was his senior year. He was willing to take a back seat to Kelly Olenek because of yeah. Kelly's emergence. Absolutely. That's a great call, Dan. <laughs> no, you. it is. No, yes, yes, yes. it is. I mean, nice job, Dick. It's about time you said something uh, uh, Elias, like that. I mean, you, you can make a case for him. Yeah, finally, three years into it. No. Uh, it's, you, know, you can make a compelling case to say that Elias is the if not the most accomplished, one of the top five most accomplished Absolutely. players in this program's history. And here's a guy in Olenek who, after a wretched year comes in, is clearly a better player. And he understands that, and he embraces that, and he had a phenomenal senior year. That's not the, that's not the norm. You know, that's the exception. That's why we celebrate it. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how this team buys in or all the rules because there's not a single player on this roster that doesn't have to make an adjustment. Sabonis with a block to go along with his 10 points and five rebounds. And now Gonzaga in transition. Slow it down, a little high-low as it knocked away inside. Not a bad look. Just a look, I go back to, to Jeremy Pargo's team. There wasn't a guy on that roster that scored 20 points a night. There were five or six guys that averaged in double figures. Is that the kind of team we're going to see? I, I think you'll see depth. I, I, I do think you'll, for, uh, as far as the scoring load's concerned, I think you're going to see Karnowski, Pangos be the two leading scorers by probably, some, you know, not a wide margin. We're not talking five, yeah. six points. But those That's are your amazing. two go-to offensive players, in my mind. And maybe Wesley's the third. But, you know, there's no way really to know. I mean, Wiltshire's got a chance to be an awfully special player. You know, this, while he's been great tonight as far as trying to score in different ways, you know, you still need to see how he is against Division One opponents, that level of athleticism, that level of physicality, uh, to see really how much he's grown. But he might be that third guy. Yeah, I think what I see is, in my opinion, I see Kevin and Shemek being the two leading scorers. But there are about six guys maybe who on any given night can carry the load. But I think Shemek and Kevin are going to carry the load more nights than others. Is it possible to have too many good pieces? Well, I mean, there's seven guys on this team that have 20-point-plus career highs in their college career. So you've got a lot of scores out here. You've got right. a lot of guys who can play. And then by January, you're going to have three transfers that are used to playing and scoring. And then you're going to have some freshmen who have grown right. with experience over the first month and a half, two months. So, I mean, again, it, it can be a blessing and a curse to have this much talent and depth. 
but I think if there is one coach who's proven that yeah. he can kind of navigate a lot of these things, it's Coach Few. And a foul called inside. And this should get Karnowski to the free throw line. Team foul number seven against the Wolfpack. And that's the 22nd foul called against the Wolfpack in this game. Shemek Karnowski, guys, he changed his body a year ago. It seems like it's even changed even more now to begin this season. I mean, there's no... There's no angles to him anymore. It's straight down. No, he had a great summer, too. He, he spent some of the, the summer here taking summer school, working out with the guys, and then he played with the Polish national team. And this year, as compared to years past, he was more of a focal port point for that team. Marcin Gortat, who was with the Washington Wizards, had been the main guy in years past, but now Shemek is kind of moving into that role with the national team. There you see some of the explosive nature of Josh Perkins trying to take it to the rim. Well, I think for Shemek, a large part of his impact this year is going to be his approach on the free throw line. And tonight, Shemek's 0 of 5 from the free throw line. He's got to make teams pay at you know, some sort of consistent rate from the line. And it's remarkable when you break down his year last year, the 12 games he shot the best from the line. As you see another three hit by the Wolfpack. He shot 47 to 60, 78 percent. His worst 15 games, he shot 26%. So it's not that he can't do it. It's just that he's so inconsistent with that approach at the free throw line. That's a real issue. Gary Bell losing the handle inside. Back comes Thompson Rivers. Fall away is no good. Slapped out of bounds, Gonzaga basketball. And right now you're seeing quick shots for GU. Not a lot of ball movement. And that defensive energy that we saw in the first half hasn't been here in the second half. We've got a 17-point game now. And Thompson Rivers right now giving GU some fits in the second half. Staying right with them. Well, they're in this zone defense, and they're doing a good job of, of plugging gaps and, and making Gonzaga kind of confused with what they're doing offensively. You've seen a couple times now Sabonis in the wrong position and guys trying to point him and direct him to get in the right spots. But you see Sabonis with the pass from the high-low. That's what we used to see his dad do a lot. Oh, his dad, Arvidas, was one of the best passing big men, not only big men, but passers, period, in the game of basketball. He was amazing. Karnowski short. And we had talked about that just a second ago. Gonzaga kind of looked a little confused against some different things. So what do you do? You bring back your senior point guard, Kevin Pangos, yep. to right the ship. And you're going to see a lot of that early on. I think you're going to see Kevin's minutes uh, stay kind of where we've seen them. Oh! oh. There's a teardrop of all teardrops. Pribiliski, he's shown a number of things. He had that up and under on the break around Byron Wesley. He's hit a pull-up three, and now that was a heck of a floater over the top of Shemek. That's three of six, a couple assists, six points, and a nice job. That would have dropped over an eight-footer. And there's Shemek at the other end. It's going to be an interesting year around Zachville. Foul called here on Kyle Dranginis. Take another look at what you just saw by Reese Krabliski. Driving that lane. Look at the seven-footer coming over. H, that was even over the glass, wasn't it? <laughs> Dick Kyle's even proud of that one. <laughs> Can't get it. <laughs> hey, here's tonight's answer to the Arby's trivia question. How many consecutive NC2A tournament appearances have the Zags made? The answer is 16 every year since 1999. That should be a, a line in a song. Try Arby's real big filet fish sandwich and right now get two for only five bucks at participating restaurants. You guys are a part of a few of those. There's an unbelievable basketball tradition here at Gonzaga. It's just such a great place to come to watch a game, to be a part of a broadcasting team. It's just a great place. Well, thanks, Dan. Thanks. That's the I sweetest thing you've ever said to me. He was complimenting wow. us. 
Well, back to the game. <laughs> so we had talked about, you know, some of the struggles early in the second half, and, and they're a little bit out of sync offensively. Gonzaga's turned the ball over already five times in the first eight minutes of the second half. You know, I can't necessarily say Thompson Rivers is creeping back into the game, but Gonzaga's not making it well, easy on themselves in any stretch. 4-12 from the field, 0-5 from three. It's hard to understand. That, you know, granted, Thompson Rivers gone back into that zone, but... She's taking some quick shots over the top of that zone rather than showing a little bit more patience and trying to get the ball around the rim. You've got a distinct advantage around the basket. Grand Guinness, nice look. Angel Nunez. And it doesn't have to be post feeds. We haven't seen a ton of that outside of maybe Wesley, that dribble penetration. You can attack the zone with that dribble drive. You saw it right there from Grand Guinness. Guys, that's all I heard last year from you two was that Gonzaga's deficit is going to be the size at the guard position. I'm not going to say that this year. Not going to be the issue this year, is no. it? No, I think well, the, it was obvious last year they played three small guards in Pango, Stockton, and Bell, but you had to because those were your most skilled and your most competitive players that put you in a chance to win. This year, Gonzaga has much more <laughs> size. There's Sabonis battling for the ball and winning. Pangos drive to the baseline. Got pinned, got the ball to Wesley. Left it for Sabonis. No whistle there. He got it back and the finish. I'll tell you what, he competes. Perkins lost the handle. Knocked out of bounds off of him. Actually may have dribbled it on the sideline. Uh, yeah, he almost had the steal. Ended up having the ball fall fall on the uh, out of bounds line but th th that's something I'm interested to see with Josh is and we all know how talented he is offensively but is he going to be a difference maker defensively uh, is he the kind of guy who's going to take that that role that charge and say I'm going to get up in the ball handlers 90 feet 80 feet at the half court line because he can do that at a level that Kevin can't really do Gary not as, you know, as consistently as he once could. I think Josh could be that difference maker at the point defensively at times for stretches. Well, it's a mindset, and I think, you know, as a freshman, you, you, you think, okay, how am I going to get minutes? Obviously, offensively, he's talented, but is he as talented as a Kevin Pangos? Probably not. How can I find minutes on the floor? If getting on the floor means going and picking up a guy 90 feet, you do that. Back to a 21-point lead under 10 minutes to play. Shot over Wesley, cleared by Nunez. There's Perkins, now he's hopping around on a foot over there. It looks like he landed on Probilski's foot when he came down from that three-point attempt. Appears to be fine now. It's amazing what happens when you see three points <laughs> go in your scoring column. The answer shot. Yeah, the answer from number four, Brett Parker. The bonus calling for it. Nice pass. And the finish. I like what I've seen tonight from Angel Nunez. Yeah, you know, I think right last year at times, whenever he got in the game, he seemed to be rushing things, be forced, kind of be in a hurry. Tonight, he's made a number of high-low plays. Let the game come to him so far. Nunez, nice catch. Out of bounds. Off of Nunez. Well, I may have said that a second too early, but... I do like on that play. He gets out in transition. He tried to draw contact. Wasn't able to quite finish the play. Yeah, he's just got to have a lot of energy out there. He's not going to play 25 minutes. He's going to play you know, 12, 15. And you see here Savonis, a little bit of a power outage as he goes up. I think the kid's a little tired. Well, you're reminding me a little bit of Richard that's, Fox. That, that's Richard Fox elevation. If that's the norm, that's highly concerning for Savonis. Well, no, I, I think he's a little tired. He's a little tired. His father wasn't a great leaper. You can't expect Domus to be. Was he? You gonna correct me, Dan? We'll, we'll be come back, back on that right, one. Right. Gonzaga Hoops is brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Show your bulldog pride with your GoZags debit card only at Numerica. And by Toyota. 
Let's Go Places. And welcome back. There are the bright lights of downtown Spokane. Fans already enjoying what they're seeing. Kevin Pangos with his tongue out. And Dan Dicko about to correct me. Arvidas Sabonis was a leaper, he's going to tell me. Oh, Arvidas Sabonis was, oh, when he was younger, he was, he was phenomenal. Tremendous. Oh, here we go. No, 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 but his when NBA career, he was not. No. That, yes. yeah. well, that's by what, that's the time what... he came over as a 30-year-old rookie, his athleticism had gone, but in part because he had torn both Achilles. If you go back and watch old YouTube highlights, USSR days for Sabonis, he was outrunning guards on a fast break. It was unbelievable. But that doesn't make him a good leaper. There's Pangos from the corner. That just means he could run. Well, I tell you what. Yeah. Tell if, me. If, if Domus Sabonis is able to improve and become a part of what Arvidas' skill set was, it will be a treat to watch him play. It should be pointed out that Dan Dickow is now a shock jerk. <laughs> and so he's he's designed to say things controversial right now. He's got a he's got a whole new trade. He's an agi agitator. Yes, he's he's absolutely developing new school skills and developing this new persona. And so you, I guess we can't always believe what he says, Richard. <laughs> uh, I, I, I Dan's only laughing. He's I not, plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. I'm Wait just a minute, saying. You're a shock jock. I'm just saying, Arvidas Sabonis Tell us about your show. was an amazing It was an opportunity to do some marketing. Yeah, I got the opportunity to uh, host Sports Talk Radio here in Spokane, 1 to 3, Monday through Friday, 700 ESPN. But one of the, my stipulations was I didn't want to leave you two fellas. I wanted to continue to enjoy okay. working with you guys. So sweet. And Richard and I were just hoping. <laughs> just you hoping I was gone? <laughs> you hoping you'd... You know, I'm just kidding, man. Of course, we love working with you. <laughs> Wesley's not enjoying this call. He's saying the foul's on the ground. Basket doesn't count. No, it's... <laughs> 6.59 to play. 71-49 our score. We're back in two. And welcome back. Dan Dicko on YouTube right now trying to find video of Arvita Sabonis taking off from the free throw line on a dunk. Here's our Subway sub of the game. And speaking of Sabonis, Mr. Domus Sabonis, 14 points, five rebounds tonight. Stop into your local Subway restaurant today and add bacon to your favorite sub or chopped salad. Bring on the bacon today at your local Subway. Subway, eat fresh. Good Let minutes. Go, Domus. Good minutes for the freshman. He's impressive. Yeah, that effort, that, that, that motor, that toughness translates. I don't care who he's playing against. And you're going to see that consistently from him. He's got a nice edge to his game. Going to compete. And I think the fact he's comp the, the level of competition he played against last year versus what, say, Perkins or Melson or, or Alberts played against is going to help him in so many ways adjust quickly once he gets used to how the game's called here and a few other smaller things. I think he's a high-impact freshman early on. Well, you can speak to the fact, Richard, because you played in the same league he did in Spain, the ACB. You go against Real Madrid or FC Barcelona, you're playing in front of 15,000 people where most freshmen come in. You're yeah. used to, oh, man, we got 1,000 people here today. You're excited. So... Atmospheres like going to UCLA and Arizona are not going to intimidate yeah, him. And it's not just on the court, the competition. He's around pros. He's their approach. He's not going to be intimidated in a big atmosphere. I think that's a great point, Dan. That ball off of Dren Guinness there. Hey, he's a fun kid, too. Works hard at practice. Coach Fuse says he's one of these motor guys that just doesn't turn off. Real coachable. Deflection by Wiltshire. Brian Guinness up to Connor Griffin. Oh, and the two wow. slam by Griffin. <laughs> I tell you what. That's a walk-on, gentlemen. talk about depth. If you have a walk-on comes in, finishes like that. We might have a little more depth. Uh-huh. Hey, coach, how about some playing time? Uh, well, if you're going to want to crack into this rotation... And you're a guy like Connor Griffin. You've got to come and make your mark and make plays like this. I didn't see that coming, boys. <laughs> oh, he's an athlete. 
he's a, a guy football player who school. could have played Pac-12 level football. He was that good coming out of Jesuit High School down in the Portland area. Well, they love him. The staff loves him. A lot like how Mike Hart started. Been a few players from Jesuit coming yeah. to this program. He does anything they need in practice. He can play all five positions in a pinch. He knows all the plays. He's a great asset on their practice squad. Nice move there by Wilcher on the post. And that was just something I don't think we would have seen from, from Kyle Wilcher before his redshirt year. Patience in the post, enough strength to read the situation and then step through and finish with the left hand. There's Griffin again defensively now. As it's stripped away, does the stripping, and then a foul is called. That'll be it for number 14, Josh Wolfram. That's his fifth. He fouls out with six points. Nine rebounds for Josh, but you know, just a little too much to ask to have to play against that much size for that much for that long a game. Hey, Zag fans, you can get your Battle in Seattle tickets now. Battle in Seattle is December 20th at Key Arena. Lower level seats start at just 35 bucks, so get your tickets now. Just visit Ticketmaster.com for more information. It's always a fun game to be yeah. at over there. Love calling the Battle in Seattle. Bounce pass. Went right at Wiltshire, and a foul called on Kyle. Did we find video of Sabonis yet? Duncan Hart. Let's see this. I haven't seen it yet, Dan. Looks like a little turnaround. Well, I will say this, going back, talking about Arvita Sabonis. Had he not torn his Achilles tendons before coming over to the NBA as a 30-year-old rookie, yes. he would have been talked about as probably top three center all time in the history of the game of basketball. Top three. Top three. So who's who would have been in front of him if he's uh, top three? Uh, it's, well, I see, mean, it's who, always who, debatable, but you've always, so, you're always going to hear so Chamberlain, the Bill Waltons, Chamberlain's, Russells. Right. They're Pretty always going to be up there. What about Shaquille O'Neal? 1988 Olympics. Or he, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He, he took it to David Robinson. That shows you at the same age where he was before all the injuries. And I'll, 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 you on can't one tell. And I believe he Rose. rushed back from a torn Achilles to play in that in that Olympics against David Robinson. Oh, boy. Here's our coaches poll in the West Coast Conference. BYU with one vote, Gonzaga with nine. That's Mark Fuse's vote. <laughs> of course. And there you have it. I re you really just did say that. You are a shock jock now, Dan. You've officially entered that atmosphere. With what comment? Our Venus Sabonis would have been a top three center of all time if he was healthy. He would. I. Uh, you could legitimately put him in a conversation. Now I'm not saying. He I would have is. put him in the same class as like a Vladi Divac. I mean, Vladi Divac, same as Arvidas Sabonis. Yes. Vladi Divac was a very good basketball player. He was very good. He was not as good as Arvidas Sabonis. I agree with that. But I'm saying he's in that class to me. But to put him up with the greats at that position, I said if he did not get hurt, he got hurt. So you never, no one was able to. Richard, ever help able me out here. You're seven feet. I'm Sabonis at his five foot two. I'm watching the game. Potential. Boys, I'm watching the game. <laughs> hey, here's another youngster at the line for Gonzaga, Brian Alberts. We haven't talked much from about him. Freshman out of Northridge, California. They stopped by any of the four trading company stores entered to win to be a Gonzaga ball boy. Must be in the second to sixth grade. I should say Gonzaga ball kid. Trading company stores located in Spokane, Latok Creek, Spokane, Valachini, and Post Falls. You talk about Brian Alberts just checking into the game. He's another one of these talented freshmen. Haven't seen him yet, obviously, but great shooter. Really good size. Good athlete. Not great athlete, but he's got a chance to be a really good player. He's been... He's been a highlight. The practices of practices that I've been to, he's looked great. How about that cut? That was a tremendous cut there by Perkins. 
Anytime you have the ability to have a point guard make a back cut like that and finish with pressure, that is definitely an advantage. Moving without the ball. Morrison was really good at that. He wasn't Arvita Sabonis. It's so really good. At that. 426 to play. It's okay, Dan. It's okay to go out on a limb. Trust me, I do it all the time. <laughs> I guess if there's one thing we can take away from a lot of this Arvidas Sabonis oh. talk is that <laughs> we are all excited Fellas. about the potential Fellas, for yes. Domus okay. Sabonis to make an impact for this Gonzaga program. <laughs> Yes, we are. <laughs> so I think we've gotten our Vita Sabonis fix done for the entire year, boys. I <laughs> hope so. Jeez, I hope so. Really nice passing big man. <laughs> There's a D3. Ten on the shot clock. Griffin saves it. And now a foul is called. We've got a timeout on the floor. 82-54, our score in Spokane. Exhibition game about in the books. Hey, tonight's smiles of the game are brought to you by Delta Dental. Zags, healthy smiles are in. Find your favorite dentist at deltadentalwashington.com and ensure a healthier mouth for life. Delta Dental of Washington, proud supporters of Healthy Smiles and your Gonzaga Bulldogs. I wish you, we could have seen Richard smile when Dan Dickow said that Arvita Sabonis was one of the top three centers of all time. I never said that directly. I said he had top three potential had he not back. torn his, both Achilles tendons early in his career. Roll the tape back. That being said, these Zags are, are, are starting to pull away here. 82-54. There's a deflection by Connor Griffin and a foul called here. Fans not happy with that foul. We'd like to see Connor get out in transition again. I would too. Well, he's a tough-nosed kid who has a lot of athleticism and I think there will be times this year that they bring him in off the bench and he can provide a spark. Here's Dren Guinness from the corner. That's off. Back come the Wolfpack. Here's a three from the corner by number three. Brett Walt. <laughs> There's Albert. You know, I, I really like Brian. I, I think he's got a ton of potential. He's the biggest of the the, the biggest of all, the three guards they brought in, uh, the freshman guards. He's like you mentioned, Danny. He's a good athlete. I think he's got a great feel. He competes in practice. I mean, he might be the one of those three you look to redshirt though. Just there's not going to be enough minutes with the depth they have. But long term, he's a guy the staff loves. It's reminiscent of when Bell, Pangos, and Dren Guinness all came in together. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point, Greg. And I, I think the thing is, is you have high-character guys that are coming in with a chance to play. And if you were to go ahead and, and redshirt Alberts, from my understanding and knowing about the kid, he'd be perfectly fine with it. He'd look at it as a chance to play four good years. Yeah. yeah. They earn points on most purchases of participating Conoco in 76 stations. The points are just like cash. Start earning them right away, but you have to be enrolled to spend them. It's called kickback. A free thank you for always coming back. Now under the game, number 55, Dustin Triano, a redshirt freshman, a walk-on from Vancouver, British Columbia. Well, Dustin's got a, an interesting connection to the head coach, Scott Clark of Thompson Rivers. Dustin's dad, Jay, is the head coach of the Canadian men's national team, and he coaches uh, on his staff as Scott Clark. Uh-oh. Here's Griffin going again. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Wow. What is this? 
the Connor Griffin show these last few minutes. I've seen this kid play a ton. I've never seen that kind of bounce. That's that's a big time elevation. I mean. Well, he makes the hustle play, and then to stay on balance and have the explosiveness to finish above the rim like that. Wow. I mean, people are talking like, can he have a Mike Hart type role? Mike Hart didn't have that athleticism, but he had that desire. Oh, uh, I, I think Con I, mean, I don't think it's this year for Connor, but he's going to be in the program for a long time. I think he's going to have an impact. There's no doubt about that. Here's our A to Z rental player of the game, Mr. Byron Wesley. No job too big or too small. Seven convenient locations. We rent everything. Let A to Z rental be your most valuable player. And it is Byron. Byron finishing tonight with 15 points and eight rebounds. Five of ten from the floor. Five of five from the free throw line. A good effort. Did a nice job. It only took one three. Really did most of his damage. That high post area off the dribble drive or off some offensive rebounds. Had three offensive rebounds. He is a really nice pickup for GU. Hi, Archer. Long rebound, did not hit the rim, so seven on the shot clock from the elbow. That's canned by Reese Prebliski. Minute 40 to play. Reese has quietly put himself together a nice little game, 16 points tonight. From the corner, Mr. Triano. a fall away. Probliski's got some game, gentlemen. Remember that teardrop that he hit over the glass in the first half. Well, he's scored in a few different ways tonight. Nice little player. From the corner is Albert. Under a minute to go. A lot of threes now. Brett Parker. Perkins. Nice pass. Griffin. Two more. That was a great job coming off that pick and roll and being patient, hesitating, looking off the defense and finding Connor Griffin. Well, guys, have the coaching staff gotten out of this game what they hope? Well, I, you know, I, don't, I, I, I don't know much, but I know the staff is, isn't going to be happy. They're going to find plenty of reason to be disappointed. I think defensively there's a lot of lot to clean up, particularly with the rotations away from the ball. You saw a lot of really good looks for Thompson Rivers. I thought the effort in the second half was pretty poor. But I think overall you see what this team could look like. I think they've got a lot of upside, and I think... All in all, uh, you have to like what you have to work with if you're the staff. I think what you like is the fact that nobody got hurt. You got your freshmen and your transfers, a little bit of experience, and you saw Gary Bell being what everybody wants Gary Bell to be, and that's a little bit more aggressive than he was last year in knocking down shots from the perimeter. Greg, your thoughts? Hey, I agree. I think it's a great team. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, it's there's tremendous pieces to this thing. It's going to depend on chemistry and can this team come together and play really good team concept basketball. And if they're able to do that, this team's really, really good. I'm stating the obvious, I know. That's going to do it. And the other thing I learned, Connor Griffin can fly. Yeah, no doubt. There's the handshake by the coaches. Gonzaga victorious in their exhibition game, 95-69, our final. For Dan Dicka, Richard Fox, and the rest of this crew, I'm Greg Heister. Good night from the McCarthy Athletic Center.